below and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to be treading on former ground because it's about time. Almost two years ago now, I made my top five best and top five worst Devil Fruits videos. And to be completely honest with you, they are some of the worst videos I've ever made and I'd really like to take them down, but they are by far my most viewed videos on the channel and they still bring in subscribers on a daily basis. So I'm in a slightly awkward position. However, what I can do is remake them. Never fear though, this is not a straight up remastering of old content because people have had two years of commenting to change my mind on my initial picks. And the series itself has evolved quite a bit, so this really is more of a much needed update. If you're familiar with the previous lists, you'll probably be shocked at just how different they are actually. And today, we are going to be starting out positively by going over the top five best Devil Fruits. The criteria for this list is as follows. Devil Fruits will be examined based on how they would affect a regular everyday human. As a result, we are not taking the Devil Fruit users into account, only the powers granted by the fruit itself. Also, we will only be taking into consideration Devil Fruits that we have some sort of confirmed understanding of at the time of this recording. So if any of you out there were looking for certain powers from Wano, sorry, but that's not happening this time around. I also don't wanna hear any crap about, well, a devil fruit is only as strong as its user, because while that may be true, it's also true that some devil fruits are just plain better than others before the user even steps into the equation. Furthermore, all devil fruits on this list must be canon because consuming a non-canon devil fruit is very much like eating a smile fruit. It's somewhat of a novelty, but for the most part, entirely disappointing and has no place here. In fact, you know what? We've already spoken about it far too much. So with that out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to the new and improved top five best devil fruits in One Piece. Number five. The Doku Doku no Mi. Starting things out today is a fruit I think often flies under the radar of many, many fans, myself included, because I certainly did not feature it on the original list. What we have here is a paramecia type that allows its user to conjure and manipulate different types of lovely, lovely poison. And before we move on, yes, it is a paramecia, not a logia, and Magellan is not an awakened paramecia user either. The power we see on display with this fruit is the base form of the Doku Doku no Mi, and it is pretty damn devastating, as it can be potent enough to act as anything from a mild irritant to an instantly deadly dosage. The poison can be produced in liquid or gas form, the latter of which being simply terrifying. And if there is a limit on how much can be conjured at any given time, it's an amount so absurd that it doesn't even come into consideration. And poison is one of those things where it really doesn't matter how strong you are, you're going to be subject to a fatal encounter, as discovered by both Luffy and Blackbeard, who were dealt with by this fruit with astounding ease. On top of that, it also has some nice utility in the area of travel through the Venom Road ability, but quite notably, it does not make the user immune to other poisons. I mean, yeah, you won't be killed or in any way harmed, but you will be sent to the bathroom for hours on end. In any case, this fruit certainly does not receive the recognition it deserves amongst the fan base for how incredibly deadly it is, but it has certainly earned its spot here today. Number four. The Magu Magu no Mi. You know, it's really difficult to go past this fruit when considering the very best in the series, but hey, I did just that. And here we are now to make things right. The Magu Magu no Mi is a Logia type that allows its user to conjure, manipulate, and become magma, also known as the hottest natural substance on the planet. And when you can craft it at your leisure, then you become one of the most terrifying individuals on said planet. Just as with the poison of the Doku Doku, it's difficult to ascertain a limit to the magma produced. However, one only really needs a small amount to be considered exceptionally dangerous, let alone the whole like volcano's worth we've seen conjured in the series. The other key difference here is that this is a Logia fruit and being able to turn your body into magma simultaneously acts as a perfect offense as well as defense. Unless you're a true master of hockey or have a very convenient devil fruit power of your own to deal with it, you are screwed. Furthermore, thanks to the One Piece Vivia card data book, we now know for a fact that the Malka Magunomi is the devil fruit with the quote unquote highest offensive power. Now that is a very vague statement. Don't take it to mean that it is definitively the most powerful devil fruit in existence. I mean, it can't be given how early it's appearing on this list, but I would take it to mean that its powers are the most offensively potent. And I think we've seen more than enough examples of that to safely drop it into the number four spot today. Number three. The Gora Gora no Mi. Alrighty, here we have a Paramecia type that gives its user the ability to create vibrations. And if that sounds a bit underwhelming at first, I hear you. But when we see said vibrations at work creating earthquakes and tsunamis, it becomes very difficult to deny the sheer power of this fruit. In fact, the Gora Gora no Mi has been said to have the ability to quite literally destroy the world, as well as being dubbed as the strongest fruit within the Paramecia class. And we know for a fact that this raw power is available instantly upon consumption without any real training, because after being acquired by Blackbeard, the very first thing he did was unleash this incredible power on Marineford. Also, this fruit has no apparent weakness apart from your standard devil fruit shiz, but in all fairness, that may be because we've primarily seen it wielded through Whitebeard, the strongest man in the world. So if it did require heavy amounts of stamina to engage in, then it really wasn't that noticeable. Even if it did though, the power to create a natural disaster on a whim is more than phenomenal and absolutely deserving of the number three spot. Number two. 
the Hobby Hobby Numi. Oh wow, when I first made this list, this one was most certainly an oversight. Over the last two years, people have continuously brought this one to my attention and I've tried to defend my choices, but in the end, this fruit is just too damn good. If you're not familiar with it, it is a paramecia type that allows its user to transform living beings into toys. The only restriction being that the user needs to touch that living being and then bam, you're a toy. As far as I'm aware, it doesn't matter how powerful you are either, you will not be able to deal with this whatsoever. In the series, most of the Straw Hat Grand Fleet were turned into toys as well as Nico Robin. And theoretically, you could turn all of the Admirals, Warlords, Revolutionaries, and Yonko into toys provided you could touch them. But once that condition has been met, the battle's over. And whoever has been transformed into a toy is now forced to follow the will of the Hobby Hobby user. That is utter madness. And if you're worried about friends of your victim taking revenge, then don't be. Because once the user has turned their target into a toy, all memories of that target are systematically erased from everyone who has ever come into contact with them. But just to make things even more insane, the user of the Hobby Hobby no Me also gains a teeny tiny side effect of eternal youth. Once the fruit is consumed, that is the age you will stay forever. To be clear, this does not make you immortal, you just won't ever age, which is still amazing. This fruit is ridiculous. However, something very important to note is that it does not grant the user any decent offensive or defensive abilities. You are a regular old squishy human, and if someone is familiar with your powers, then you're probably pretty screwed in any combat situation. It is that, and that alone, that stops the Hobby Hobby no Me from climbing any higher on this list. Now before we get to number one, let's do something I don't normally do on the channel, but I did it in the original video, so why not? Honorable mentions of devil fruits that did not quite make the list today. The Yami Yami no Mi. Here's the deal. If it is ever confirmed that this devil fruit is what allows you to possess a second devil fruit, then it will be thrown into the number one spot, no contest. Unfortunately, we do not know that at the time of this recording, and as cool as black holes are, as demonstrated in the series so far, I don't think they trump the abilities we've examined. The Soru Soru no Mi. This fruit is absolutely insane, but only in the hands of an equally as insane individual. The main problem is that this fruit is completely ineffective against those who don't fear death. And in the hands of a normal everyday person, people are unlikely to fear your capacity to cause death. So soul manipulation isn't really on the cards. The Ope Ope no Mi. Incredible devil fruit, but its true value lies in the user sacrificing themselves to grant eternal youth to another person. Not so great for the user at all. The Pika Pika no Mi. Yes, it grants you the ability to move at whatever the One Piece world equivalent of light speed is, but it has huge issues in that light can only move in a straightforward direction unless reflected. This fruit is nowhere near as good as people believe it is, and yes, Kizaru uses it fantastically, but the average person would not. And with that, we finally arrive at number one. The Goro Goro no Mi, the reigning champion and one of only two fruits from the original list to retain their position. I cannot stress enough just how bloody amazing this fruit is. I know a lot of people are probably angrily typing something along the lines of, um, how can lightning be better than light? Light is so much faster. And you're right, but that is literally the only advantage that the Pika Pika no Mi has over the Goro Goro no Mi. As a lightning logia, the user of this fruit has the ever amazing power to travel wherever the hell they want because lightning is not bound by the restrictions of light as well as conjure far, far, far greater destructive power, capable of one-shotting most individual combatants and even destroying entire islands with seemingly no effort whatsoever. It's certainly not on the same scale of destructive power as the Goro Goro no Mi, but the user of the Goro Goro no Mi is granted an incredible level of control, able to focus wildly deadly power into precise targets, avoiding unnecessary destruction should the user see fit. It also happens to be one of those very rare fruits that allows the user to revive themselves from the verge of death by being able to administer a shock to their heart upon entering a state of cardiac arrest. And yes, some people will still go on about how the Pika Pika no Mi is better, but I've also heard the argument of, well, the lightning fruit cannot be the best devil fruit because it lost to Luffy. That should make the rubber fruit the best devil fruit. And it's absolutely the stupidest argument I've ever heard. It's like saying that Superman isn't strong simply because kryptonite exists. Yes, the Goro Goro no Mi has a single natural weakness, but that does not negate every other incredible advantage you gain by consuming it. And finally, at the time of this recording, it is still the only devil fruit in the series that has ever been stated to make the user essentially invincible. And with all of that in mind, it's pretty easy to see how NL developed his god complex because consuming this fruit for all intents and purposes made him just that. Now it can't grant eternal youth or be considered the strongest defensive power or even destroy the world, or actually it probably could destroy the world if you gave it enough time. But this fruit is all around incredible regardless and capable of so much more en masse than any other, which is why it remains the undisputed champion of this list. But that pretty much does it for the new and improved top five devil fruits in one piece. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also do check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items with the proceeds going directly to support the channel as well. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your own best devil fruits in the series. This is been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.